In this video, I'm going to be covering the subtractive filter section of the Ropa synthesizer. The filter in this section is a traditional subtractive filter. That means that the filter is removing frequencies from the synthesizer's audio signal. This frequency removal is used to sculpt the synth sound. So just for demo purposes, I have a simple saw wave loaded up into the Europa synthesizer. So it's just this blank initialized patch, and then just take the shape control all the way up, and then we'll route that into our filter by selecting this button. And that sounds like this. Just a simple saw waveform. The first control on this filter is this drive knob. What this does is it controls the amount of overdrive that we have on our signal, and it creates a sort of saturated, distorted style effect as it's overdriving our audio signal into the filter. And that sounds like this. This red indicator light also shows you when the sound is beginning to saturate. So as I increase this knob, watch that red indicator light, and you'll see as the sound starts to change, red indicator light is now active. So this just is used to give your sound a little bit more fatness and a little bit more distortion. The next control is this filter frequency. What this does is it controls the frequency at which your filtering starts. So in the case of our filter mode right here, this low pass ladder filter, any frequency that is above this cutoff point is going to be cut out, and any frequency that is below this cutout point is let through. And that sounds like this. The next control is this resonance knob. What resonance is, is a thin frequency boost at the frequency cutoff point that we have set. So what it's doing is just boosting a small bell curve right at this cutoff point. And that sounds like this. That'd be the equivalent of if we look at our spectral filter, if it's set to a low pass mode, and we take the resonance knob all the way up, you'll see that there's this boost happening at this frequency cutoff point. So if we move the frequency cutoff, that boost moves with it. And that's the same thing that's happening here with the resonance. So within this subtractive filter, there are several different filter modes we could choose from, each with a slightly different sound. If we click on this menu right here, we'll see this drop down, and it gives us all of these different subtractive filters that we can work with. The first four filters, we have a high pass, a band pass, a low pass, and a notch filter. The other filter modes are just variations upon those same styles of filter with slightly different cutoffs and slightly different frequency responses. So for the purposes of this video, we're just going to be covering these first four because these other ones are essentially the same thing, just with a slightly different sound. The first filter is going to be this high pass filter mode. And what this does is it cuts out all the frequencies that are below the cutoff point. So we can start this off on the left and it sounds like this, and then I'll just increase it to the right. So what you can hear there is that all of our low frequencies are being cut off with a high pass filter. The next filter mode is the band pass filter. And what this does is it cuts off the frequencies below and above our frequency cutoff point. So it just gives us a small short band that we could scan through our frequency spectrum. And that sounds like this. If I was to show you what that cutoff curve would look like in our spectrum EQ, you can go ahead and bring that EQ up. It would be the equivalent of cutting out the low frequencies and the high frequencies. So a bandpass filter is just this curve right here. So it's cutting out everything on the low end and cutting out everything on the high end. We could take this frequency curve and just move it around as well. So if we move it to the right, it would be something like this. And if we moved it to the left, it would be something like this. And just for now, we can go ahead and remove our filtering. So that's the bandpass mode all sorted. The next filter mode that we have is the low pass filter. And this is the one that I talked about a little bit earlier. It cuts out all of our high frequencies. So everything that's below this cutoff point and lets all of the low frequencies pass through. And that sounds like this. The final filter mode that we're gonna be talking about is the notch filter. Now what a notch filter is, is essentially the opposite of the bandpass filter. Instead of cutting out frequencies below and above the cutoff point, it's only cutting out a small portion of the frequencies that are at this cutoff point. And that sounds like this. So this kind of filter mode is great for creating phasing style effects. 
This filter mode is also used to create reef spaces and different bass sounds like that. I was to show you this over in the Spectrum EQ. This would be the equivalent of having a small frequency band. And we could just hold our Option key to make that cue a bit smaller. And that filter mode is essentially this. It's cutting out a small portion of the frequencies, but leaving all of the high frequencies and the low frequencies. So as we move it around, we get a similar style effect to the notch filter. So that's just a good visual representation of what a notch filter is doing. Now the other types of filters that we have are just basic variations on those same filters. So a different style of a low pass filter with a slightly steeper cutoff, so a 24 decibel filter. So it's just a sharper frequency cutoff. We have another low pass filter, another low pass filter with a slightly steeper cutoff, a high pass filter with a steeper cutoff, and then the K35LP, which is just modeling the filter on the old Korg MS20 units. So if you want an analog style filter, it sounds like a hardware synth or something like that, then this mode is a good one to choose. The final controls that we have on the filter are these knobs, the first of which is the keyboard tracking knob, and this means that the filter's cutoff frequency responds to how low or how high the note is on your keyboard. So if it's turned all the way up to 100%, which is this default, the higher up I play my keyboard, the higher up this frequency will move. If I turn this keyboard tracking all the way down, no matter what note I press on the keyboard, the filter frequency will always stay at the same point. The next control is this modulation routing control. And what this enables you to do is to quickly create a modulation on the filter's frequency. So right now, this is set to envelope number two. Just for the sake of example, we could set it to this LFO. So the low frequency oscillator we can also bring that speed up a little bit too. So what we could see here is the low frequency oscillator is now routed to control this filter's frequency. This amount control just controls the intensity of that effect. So we can bring it up and then we'll bring our filter cutoff down. And that sounds like this. And if I was to bring that rate down on the low frequency oscillator, we'll hear that same effect, but a little bit slower. The final knob on the filter is this filter velocity control. And what this feature does is it enables the velocity to control the amount of this low frequency oscillator effect. So the amount of modulation that is applied to the filter. So if I softly press one of the keys on my keyboard, you are not gonna hear a lot of modulation happening. But if I press that key really hard, you're gonna hear more modulation happening. So this is great to create more expressive and playable synth sounds. So that covers the subtractive filter section of the Europa synthesizer. I'll see you in the next video where I'll be covering the amplifier envelope section. Thanks, and I'll see you there.